As you may or may not know, my wife and I just got back from Vegas. It was a great trip. We ate, we drank, we had a blast. But then we got home and looked at the credit card, and uh, I gotta say, it doesn't matter how much fun you're having, 25 bucks for a drink is a ripoff. Frickin' Vegas. I hate getting ripped off, and so do the lads over at Harry's. They spent years watching the razor blade companies rip people off and said, No more! Not all heroes wear capes, my friends, and they want to prove that they're legit by offering you hot dogs a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. I've been telling you about them for months, and I'm genuinely proud to have Harry's as a sponsor of this show. I wasn't kidding. The plastic, futuristic-looking crap razors you get at the store are overpriced, and they're poor quality. Harry's blades are crisp, clean, and classy. They're the kind of razor you'd expect your grandpa to have on his bathroom counter. And most importantly, they work. Shave after shave, they're so smooth, they're precise. I used to go through the crappy store blades all the time, but Harry's are built to last. And they're not just better quality than the other names, they're more affordable. And they deliver. Just set your schedule, and for as little as two bucks, new blades, shaving creams, lotions, everything you need, right to your door when you need it. I genuinely cannot think of a reason not to try Harry's. And I'm not just saying this because they're sponsors. They're the best shaving supplies I've ever used. Try them out. And if you're not happy, your shave's on them. And unlike the other subscriptions, they're really easy to cancel if you want to, too, which is a nice bonus, but... Believe me, you're, you're not going to want to cancel. Getting ripped off isn't funny. Switch to Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. That's harrys.com slash RTG for a $3 trial set. Remember the Game is brought to you by my website, abcomedy.net. Uh, as you may or may not know, I'm a comedian by night. And as much as I love talking about old video games, uh, telling jokes is how I actually pay my bills. So please check out my website. Uh, in addition to old episodes of this podcast, you'll find my blog, videos of my stand-up, all of my upcoming shows, and my contact information. If you need a comedian for your next fundraiser, corporate event, house party, whatever you got going on, uh, hit me up. Again, it's abcomedy.net. And if you're enjoying the podcast, please subscribe to it. Please leave us a good review. Uh, and most importantly, please tell a friend. I'd really appreciate it. There'll be a new episode every single Wednesday. Thank you guys so much for the support. I hope you enjoy the show. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Remember the Game, my retro gaming podcast, where every week a buddy of mine and I sit down and geek out about the games we played back in the day. My name is Adam Blank. Thank you so much for listening. If it's your first time on the show, welcome aboard. If you're a returning guest, thanks for uh, coming back down to the trenches with me. This week, episode 46, my pal Mark McHugh is back. Uh, he is a Zelda nerd. And as you'll have already guessed from the title of the episode and the music I just played, we are talking The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker for the Nintendo GameCube, and I guess later for the Wii U, but the GameCube. Uh, pretty solid game, man. I, I'll get into more about that in a second, but I'm pretty jacked. This is a good episode. This is a good game. The music's awesome. Uh, ah, so awesome. Ah, Wind Waker's the best. Uh, you guys, uh, you guys know I got to ramble for a few minutes before I get to the the chatting about the game. So here we go. We are on Twitter and we're on Instagram at Member the Game, just like Remember, but without the re at the front because someone already fucking had those. So if you're on those, please follow us. We'll follow you back, or at least I try to, and that'd be really cool. Uh, we're also on Facebook at Facebook.com/slash Remember the Game, and we are now on. I mean, we were already there, but now the channel the channel is named it. We are on YouTube at YouTube.com/slash Remember the Game. Please subscribe to our channel if you're on youtube i couldn't name it before because you need to have 100 subscribers to name it and uh i'll be fully blunt about it i actually took my old comedy channel that already had almost 100 followers that i've been uploading the podcast to and just converted it over to remember the game so if you were there for comedy i'm sorry go to my website uh, abcomedy.net you can find my comedy there this one's going to be all about uh, the video games now 
And, uh, and do really please subscribe to it. I've got some, uh, I know I've been teasing it for a little while. I'm going to keep teasing it for the upcoming uh, month or so, but I've got let's plays coming. I've got game reviews coming. At least hopefully I have that kind of stuff coming. Plus you can always find the podcast on there. Uh, the plan is to now that it's 2019 and it's way out of date and not relevant anymore. I'm going to trickle onto YouTube. So youtube.com slash remember the game, please subscribe. If you're there, if you subscribe and you got a YouTube channel, let me know. I'll subscribe back. I'm totally down with all that stuff too. Uh, and if you're liking the show, please leave us a good review on iTunes or any of those types of things. I don't know what they accomplish, as I always say, but I know we need them, and I'd really, really appreciate it. Um, I do want to give a quick shout out to a couple of people that have reached out to me. Uh, they reached out to me on Instagram and I've missed their messages. They sent them weeks ago because I didn't check my DMS on Instagram because most of them were just spam from other accounts that I followed back. Uh, but I dug through them the other day and actually found two messages that were real. Uh, so bad luck design all the way in Argentina. Thank you so much for the message and for listening to the show. That's fucking rad. And, uh, true line graphics also, uh, down in Calgary. Thank you so much for the shout out, dude. And hopefully we can hook up down the road. Uh, to do something. Thanks for reaching out, you guys. Uh, what's going on in my life? Uh, nothing. I'm just telling a lot of jokes. Comedy's busy. And uh, like I've been teasing and teasing, and I feel like I'm overhyping it, and it's going to under-deliver. But I'm trying really hard to uh, really take the podcast to the next level. I, I, uh, I've got the capture card finally figured out. I bought one. Uh, if you follow us on Instagram, uh, you've probably seen me post about it. Uh, I do all my editing, all my computer work and everything on a MacBook Pro. I don't know anything about computers. If you're listening to this and you're like, Mac sucks, go uh, Windows, whatever the non-Mac PC, I guess, whatever the non-Mac is. I don't know. I don't know anything about this stuff. It's You guys, I'm sure, know that from the quality of the product so far. Uh, it turned out to use my capture card on my MacBook. I had to download Windows and install Windows. So now whenever I fire my computer and I want to use the capture card, I have to basically switch, uh, I don't know, drives or operating systems or something and flip over to Windows. And then I can record and then flip back over to Mac so that I can do all my editing and uploading and stuff like that. So it's uh, I am fucking learning. But I have it working. I've started working on some stuff for the YouTube and things like that, like Let's Play, some game reviews, things like that. I don't know if anyone's going to care or want to watch them, but uh, it's really been a great learning experience for me. And an excuse, and it's an excuse to go back and play old video games, which I'm always looking for. So it's been pretty rad. Uh, I'm working on Twitch as well. That's not going quite as good, uh, but I'll get there. The issue I'm running into with Twitch is that uh, as I record this right now, I'm sitting in my... it's. It's a spare bedroom of our condo, but I call it my office upstairs in our townhouse. And uh, it's great for, for gaming and it's good for podcasting and stuff because it's nice and quiet. But the the internet signal has to come up through the floor and I just, it doesn't, I don't think I've got a strong enough Wi-Fi signal up here. When I try to do streams, I go back and watch them and they're very, like they're unwatchably is that a real word? They're they're unwatchable. They're so laggy and choppy. Uh, but then I tried doing them downstairs in the living room right near our Wi-Fi thing, and they seem pretty smooth. So uh, I am planning to get onto Twitch uh, here in the coming weeks, and it's just going to have to be uh, downstairs, which means it may not be a camera. But I don't really want to be on the camera anyways. You guys are better off just listening to the soothing sounds of my uh, horribly uh, half-developed voice instead of having to look at my half-developed face at the same time. So, uh, But Twitch is cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm enjoying it. I'm really enjoying the whole Let's Play thing as well. Like I said, just an excuse to play old games, which is fucking dope. I'm really having fun. Uh, what else is going on? Detective Pikachu is out. Apparently, it's pretty good. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. Um, I'm supposed to be going to see it later this week with my girlfriend. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. The reviews are good, man. It's pretty cool because, I mean, we all know that 90% of video game movies suck ass. Sonic looks like it's going to suck. Uh, but Detective Pikachu has apparently been pretty dope, so I'm pretty pretty excited about that. When I think of video game movies, the first one that comes to my mind every time, always, without fail, is the Super Mario Brothers movie from the 90s. Uh, my brother and I owned that video on VHS, and I fucking watched that movie a ton. And I, it, admittedly, it might be a bad movie, but I'm not willing to admit it. I love it. You know, I want a sequel to that fucking movie. Um, yeah, sorry, I just got a text message. Why do I gotta put my phone away when I'm fucking recording? Uh, Super Mario Brothers movie. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It, I mean, if you <laughs> check it out, if you've got time to kill, don't go. If you're like, ah, oh, my time is valuable, then don't go see that fucking movie. Uh, but do see Detective Pikachu because it looks pretty good. Um, that's all I have to talk about. What am I playing this week? Uh, I finished a lot of stuff in the last seven days, man. It's been, you know, that feeling when you just get on like a hot streak and you're just 
like killing off games left and right and like knocking them off the backlog. And I try to not keep a backlog. I don't consider all the retro games my backlog. I just consider them available to me. Um, but it's been a good week. I finished off Shining Force finally on the Sega Genesis uh, Classic Collection on my Switch. Uh, pretty solid. I definitely have some criticisms, but uh, there's an episode upcoming a thousand percent. Um, I've had a couple people reach out to me about doing the episode, and I really appreciate it. But uh, my pal Miklos was the first one to bring it up. He's been on me forever to play it and to talk about it, so we're gonna do it. Uh, so there's an episode about Shining Force upcoming. I also finished off the original Resident Evil uh, a few days ago. Uh, pretty rad. I've never finished it the whole way through, and I had a really good time. Uh, it's so cheesy. It's awesome. Um, I definitely got to play the second one. I'm hoping with E3 right around the corner, they drop the Resident Evil 2 remake on the Switch because, uh, as you all know, I am a purely Switch gamer, the modern consoles. Um, Resident Evil 4 is coming to it in like another two weeks, and I think it's priced pretty high, and some people are kind of like upset about that, but I'm like, dude, it's Resident Evil 4. I fucking love Resident Evil 4. Like, it's on my 10 favorite games of all time list. I would, I'll pay full price to play Resident Evil 4 on the go. Uh, so that's why I have been playing Shining Force and finish, finish off Shining Force, finishing off Resident Evil. Uh, I've fallen back down the Mario Kart 8 wormhole the last two or three days. I was just looking for something to kill some time the other day before we went out, uh, for Mother's Day, uh, with my mom and I started playing Mario Kart 8 again and I just, I fucking adore Mario Kart 8. I know I was literally just saying how great Resident Evil 4 is, but if Resident Evil 4 is in my top 10 games of all time, Mario Kart 8 is, is absolutely on my top five games of all time it's my favorite game of the last probably since last of us came out i don't remember when last of us came out but uh it's my favorite game since last of us i fucking well no no it is i was gonna say like i mean breath of the wild mario odyssey those games are all pretty good but no mario kart 8 is just like mario kart as a whole is awesome i don't think there's such a thing as bad mario kart except maybe the mario kart wii i didn't really care for but uh, Mario Kart 8 is just like a morphine. I, it's a morphine drip. I'm, I'm completely addicted to it. Every time I start playing it, then I can't stop playing it. Uh, I fucking love it. One of the ideas I have for the podcast and the growing of the community down the road is uh, I'm thinking about launching like a Mario Kart 8 community tournament type thing i don't know if a lot of people listening to this have switch online have switches have mario kart 8 but it's something i'm considering uh and it's basically just an excuse to play mario kart 8 because it's the fucking greatest uh and then i've been playing some old games just getting ready for the potential hopeful launch of the youtube channel and if you listen to the show regularly or follow us on instagram uh you know what my favorite game the greatest game of all time is and that's been the one i've been focused on uh, at least here in the early going because it's the it's the best the greatest game of all time uh, but that's enough about that. That's enough about what I have been playing. Now let's get to what we're talking about. And this week, like I said, we are talking The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker for the Nintendo GameCube and eventually for the Wii U. Uh, admittedly, I finished this game one time. I've played through the whole thing once on the GameCube and that's it. I never turned it on again. I never touched the remake. I was a little rusty going into this one, but Mark is a Zelda geek and he had my back and uh, I have an incredibly high opinion of this game. I mean, you're about to find out exactly why, but uh, I love this game. I mean, Breath of the Wild, of course, is probably my favorite 3D Zelda, but this one is a, by a mile number two ahead of Skyward Sword. Actually, I never played Twilight Princess, uh, Majora's Mask, Ocarina of Time. None of them, for my money, can touch Wind Waker. I, I love it. I love the art style. It's so uplifting and just fun to play. I love the music. I, I would love to see a Mario game in that art style. I just, it's just gorgeous. Um, And that's what we're going to talk about this week. So I'm going to cue the music right now and uh, introduce my pal Mark McHugh, who is a fellow Zelda nerd, a fellow comedian, a confidant, and a great friend. We are going on the road tomorrow, which will be today by the time this uh, episode goes live to perform in Grand Prairie. So if by chance you're listening to this in Grand Prairie on May 15th before 8 o'clock, come down to the Great Northern Casino and see us. Uh, I don't think anyone in Grand Prairie even has fucking internet to access any of this, but if you do, oh, it would make me happy if you came by and said hi. Uh, but we're, while we're up there, we're going to be recording episode 50 of the podcast, sitting in the room, a couple episodes, including the big one, episode 50. I'm excited, but that is then. This is now. We are talking The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. It originally released in North America on March 24th, 2003 for the Nintendo GameCube. It is awesome, and we're going to tell you why right now. Here we go. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. 
Everyone that listens to this podcast knows about our illustrious CEO, my dog, Molly. But the other silent partner behind the scenes is my wife. And let me tell you, my friends, a 17-year relationship with another person that has to talk to and live with you is a lot harder to maintain than one with a dog. We've had our ups and downs, and as you all know, a relationship isn't all sunshine and rainbows. They can be a lot of work. You get out what you put in when it comes to relationships, and talking to a therapist can be a fantastic way to put in some work. They can help you work through your issues, learn to communicate better, and even just provide you with an ear to bend when you need it. I've talked to my therapist about my relationships, especially when it came to my stand-up comedy career and how much I was away from home, and they helped me work on ways to keep my relationships strong even when I was out on the road. Uh, it turned out our relationship was actually better when I was out on the road, but that's that's a story for another day. And I know, right? Therapy. Who has the time these days? BetterHelp hears you, and they're making it easy. Fill out a quick form online, and they'll match you up with a therapist that suits your needs, and that'll work around your schedule. You pick the meet times, and you can get your therapy fix from anywhere, over video, phone, or just chat. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash RememberTheGame today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash RememberTheGame. Now that we just wasted 30 seconds talking about the game we're going to talk about today without <laughs> recording, uh, we'll try to have that conversation again. My guest this week, comedian, nerd, friend, Mark McHugh. How's it going, pal? Doing all right. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for doing it. Uh, this week, we are talking Legend of Zelda. If you don't know, Mark has done just about every Legend of Zelda game I've done on here so far. Well, I guess we only did Ocarina and, and Link to the Past. I think that's the only ones we we've did. Done Link's so far. Awakening too. Oh yeah, and Link's Awakening. Oh, and we have a few more that we can go through. All yeah, right. I have another one in the bank. I don't know what it would be up before or after this one that I did with David Ray. Who's and after we were cool. done, that's my roommate. Yeah, he's dope. And uh, but after we were done recording, I was like, I kind of feel like I cheated on Mark. I was like, <laughs> I talked Zelda with someone that wasn't Mark. I that's feel a, like that's the one Zelda game I don't like. Oh well, then we're okay. Then yeah, that's perfect. Uh, so this week, as you probably know from the intro, the music, the screenshot, the title of the episode, uh, we're talking Wind Waker. Uh, primarily for the GameCube, maybe we'll drift into the remake. Um, the remake, it's pretty much the same. It just streamlined through a few things. Oh, okay. Well, then yeah. we're just talking Wind Waker. Yeah. Uh, Mark, you're the you are the Resident Zelda guy. I I know this game. I've beaten this game. This is one of my you're favorite the expert. Games. What this do you is, think? This is one of my fa- okay. So a few <laughs> years ago, I went to. I feel like the thing I love most about this game is it has. Like, it has its own breath, almost. It has its own total feel. Like, a few years ago, I went to PEI to do some shows out there. And my buddy, he lives with a violin player for this band, Hey Rosetta. And I was, like, I got there in the middle of the afternoon, and I was exhausted, so I had a nap. And I woke up, and I was on, like, when I woke up, I was in PEI. I was on this beautiful island. I was right next to the beach. And I heard this woman, like, playing the fiddle upstairs. And my first thought was, like, I'm in Wind Waker right now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, that's how much the, the, that's how much of that game I carry in my soul at all times. I, I, I can get behind that. Yeah. I like that. I uh, Dude, this is, like, I, I'm very hot and cold on the Zelda games. Like, the ones mm-hmm. I like, I fucking like. But the ones I don't like, I don't. And mm-hmm. this is not only one I like. This is, like, easily in my five favorite Zelda games. I don't know where exactly it would fit. This is the first 3D Zelda I liked. This is the game has a lot of flaws, but there's a lot like there's a lot to be said about the feel of this game. It's just you okay. you you start the game, you're on this beautiful this like idyllic little island. Yeah. You're on this great sea and immediately you look out on this sea and you're like I wonder what's out there. Yeah. Yeah. And you know and then uh, like your sister gets kidnapped with a bird, you have to go rescue them and you run into some pirates and they're like they bring you on this boat and immediately like right off the bat you're in like you're in a pirate ship on your way to rescue your sister right yeah which is one of the things i like about this game is that at least to start like it's all about your it's not 
and like it's and listen, Zelda fans, like I get it. I like Zelda too, but like a, a majority of Zelda games are like you know, Ganon and the Triforce and the Princess Zelda and that kind of stuff. And I know that that eventually becomes Ganon and the Triforce. Mm-hmm. But, but like to start off, you're just a kid who wants to save his sister. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I just I like that change of pace. I think that's really cool. Like, like he's not like the chosen hero like off on a quest no, to he's, save Hyrule. He's like, no, I have a clear motivation here. Yeah. This is why I'm doing the things I'm doing. Just a little weird anime looking kid who wants to save his sister. Yeah. Uh, I do. Okay. So for starters, like, I mean, uh, you remember when this game first came out, Yeah, you know, like it's like, dude, people like before it had actually come out and anyone people had played hated it, it. Yes. people shit all over this game because, because of people the... wanted the dark. Like, right. Zelda right. Game. Cause this is coming on the heels of, if you take the handheld games out of the equation, this is coming on the heels of Ocarina of time and Majora's mask, right? Which were mm-hmm. Zelda's uh, link, whatever. Uh, these were the, were the first two like legend of Zelda games to get out of that 2d almost overhead style and mm-hmm. go into like a 3d, like, Oh, look how tall he is compared to everybody else. And this kind of stuff game. Right. And they, <laughs> it's easy to look at the Nintendo 64 games now and be like, that doesn't look real at all, but it fucking did in the at late nineties. Yeah, at the time it was like, this was the realest that is right. The games uh, I like, I, I don't know how to, I mean, anyone listening to this probably played them the same as us and felt the same way. But like at the time, Ocarina of time looked like breath of the wild. Yeah. You know what I mean? We looked at it like, wow, like what is this world that they're giving us? And, uh, and a ton of people really liked that. Adult. Like, I mean, I, pl- I played, uh, I, uh, it doesn't matter. We won't even get into it. Like a ton of people played them. Most people liked them. Uh, but then wind waker came along and everyone was waiting for this. Like, I can't wait to see what they do with the game. Cause with Mario, they did like when they released, uh, Mar- I can't remember if Mario sunshine was before or after wind waker because luigi's mansion was the launch mm-hmm. mario ish i think uh, mario sunshine came out about eight months into the gamecube's life it was before like wind waker i think i think it was yeah regardless screenshots were out mario sunshine was uh a, like an a, an hd version of mario 64 it was still 3d mario looked the same mm-hmm. it was just he looked crisper and I think when you knew a Zelda game was coming, that's what people wanted was a Majora's Mask, Ocarina of Time style, crisper looking adult Link. Yeah. And then when the screenshots and everything started coming out, it was like, this is a, this is a cartoon. Like, yeah, like literally a cartoon, like a cell shaded cartoon. Like people didn't know what to make of this game at all. And, uh, and I'll be honest with you, man. Like it, like I was more intrigued to play it by the style because I like that cartoony style. Like I, I mean, Mario, I love Mario. Uh, I like cartoony looking games. They don't all have like to be My realistic. reaction just was like, oh, I guess that's what they're doing next. Like I wasn't disappointed. Like I didn't have this grand expectation for whatever the next game was going to be. Right. So I was just a Zelda fan. I was just like, oh, I just want to see what they do next. Like they, I was going to say this is the first oddball game, but it's not because Zelda 2 was oddball compared to Zelda and, like, and Majora's Awakening. Mask and Awakening. Like they've always done different things, but I do feel like this was as drastic of art style change as the game had ever, as as, as, mm-hmm. as Zelda had ever experienced, you know? Oh, absolutely. Like, I mean, I, I suppose you could argue Zelda 2 to the original Zelda were pretty drastic changes compared to what the NES, you know, based on what the NES was capable of. Mm-hmm. But this was like, literally, it was like going from a, a, a real life movie to a cartoon. Like, that's mm-hmm. almost what, major, or what, what Wind Waker felt like when people started seeing it. Well, and it was like, it was a whole new, different concept. You didn't get to explore these, like, you didn't get to explore a desert. You didn't get to, like, I mean, you did, but you didn't really get to, like, climb, like, like Death Mountain or anything. Right. You yeah. got, I mean, you got to do Dragon Roost Island, which was clearly the Death Mountain <laughs> of this game. Yeah. But you didn't. You didn't really get to spend a lot of time in Hyrule, which I think a lot of people were bummed about. Right. But it's such an interesting concept. And like and like I said, you start the game and you see this big open open ocean and you're like, Oh, I wonder what's out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that, man. I loved like I loved just coasting on the on that on the I can't remember the name of the boat. Uh, the King of Red Because it was the king yeah, yeah. Uh I, I, I love just being on that boat and looking around and just be like, I can't wait to see what's going to come, like what's going to pop up. You know what I mean? And I know some people found sailing kind of boring and stuff like that. I all I never, never once did I find it boring or monotonous to be on the boat, no. ever. I no. just loved exploring it. You never knew when you are going to come across like a treasure or like a raft or, you know what I mean, like some little mm-hmm. island or anything. I adored that. And honestly, and I made a note about this, I think 
and maybe I'm completely wrong, but I wouldn't be surprised if part of the reason they went with the style of the, the cell shading and the cartoony style of this is because if they had tried to go more photorealistic with it, I think that the being on the raft all the time wouldn't have been... It would have come across as more boring than it did. It would have, absolutely. If the water was been. more realistic looking and there's a real looking sky, you might... You know what I mean? Like, it, it's so bright when you're it's out so there It's so bright on the boat. and it's so, like... Yeah, and it does have that, like, air of mystery. But if it was just, like... It just felt like you were on a lake, on a boat. Yeah. You know? It's... I mean, Breath of the Wild is... I don't even know if there's anything bad to say about Breath of the Wild. But there are moments, at least, in, from, in my opinion, where you're just running through a field trying to get to the next place if you don't want to warp or whatever. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? If you're just, and it can be a little bit like kind of like, eh. You know, you're just running. You know what I mean? You're like, I just want to fucking get there. You know yeah. what I mean? And uh, there's a lot of that in Wind Waker. The, and that's kind of the bigger flaw of, uh, of Wind Waker is there's a lot of like, there's a lot of downtime between going from one point to the next point. A lot of downtime. But... But whatever you find at the next point is always going to be fun or at the very least somewhat engaging. Totally. So that's one of the things I love about this game. And like, and again, like, so the point I was trying to make with the cartoony thing is I think that that brightness alleviates a little bit of the like blandness of just floating around on this fucking boat. Mm-hmm. Um, so it had a map, right? It was like a grid. Yeah. And you could bring it, it was up. It's like seven by seven or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And each square on that grid, there was at least one. And some had multiple islands, didn't it? Uh, so there'd be either one island or there'd be like a few like little things. Like a that clump are... of things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, to me, one of my favorite things about this game was just like, I couldn't wait to just explore each island and just see what mm-hmm. I could find on each one. Or like there's a part pretty early in the game where you're sailing and you come across like a volcano that's going off. And if you try to go near it, you get killed instantly. Right. Like, so you are like, oh, I don't have the thing I need to get in there but I'm going to remember that there's a volcano there. Right. I just, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like it's, um, to me, like a game, I don't care how long a game is. If a game is fun, it doesn't have to be 60, 70. Yeah. Like some of the funnest games I've played in the last like 15, 20 years were like 10 hours long. Yeah. You know, that doesn't bother me. Um, but if a game is going to be 30, 40, 50 hours long, then like, then be fun. I never wanted to get to the point where I'm just sick of, exp- you know what I mean? I'm like, I just want to finish it and be done. Yeah, and and I never felt like that with Wind Waker because I found it so fun to explore and to just keep seeing what's on the next island and like you said, or to find somewhere that you couldn't get to. Like that mechanic, the whole—I don't even want to necessarily call it the Metroidvania mechanic, but the whole concept of seeing somewhere and not being able to get there yet, but being like at some point I'll be able to go see mm-hmm. what was going on there. Uh, and it, it was, it, I it, love that. And it is in a sense the very first open world Zelda. Totally, yeah. I have that written down here to say. Like, I mean, I. To me, the closest, no, no, not even, I was going to say like, you know, like Link's Awakening and Ocarina of Time and all those, but they weren't nearly as open world as this mm-hmm. was. This was like, all right, fucking go. You're on the water. Go like see there were happens. a few, uh, there were a few things you had to do first and then the world just opened up. Yeah. And then you can go anywhere and just see anything. Which is really but then there, But there were still totally things you couldn't get to yet because you didn't have the right equipment. Right, right. Like you could run across that like cabana, like that cool like cabana island in the middle of the ocean right and you can go and you can explore it but you can't get inside because that can like you don't finish that quest till the end of the game right yeah yeah i wonder if like when they were designing this game i wonder if they covered the water the world in water like if that was one of their first ideas for the game or i wonder if they were just trying to make this big kind of open world lots of exploring game and then we're like we need a way to fucking split these places up a mm-hmm. little bit. You know what I mean? Like, and they were like, well, let's put them on a boat. Like, let's flood the world. Mm-hmm. Cause that's the other thing is, and, and I'll tag out to you on this. Cause you know, this far better than me, but this was like one of the first Zelda games where there was like a uh, reference to a previous Zelda game. Yeah. Like right? the hero of time is mentioned right in the title screen. Right. Like this is like, so, and I, and I'm, I told the Zelda guy is fucking killing me, so I'm counting on you to fix this if I'm wrong. In in theory, at least, the, the world you're floating on is the world from Ocarina of Time, but I'm it just has gonna been go on, flooded, right? Yes, I'm just going to say on record, fuck the timeline. Totally, totally, The timeline, totally. yeah. Uh, there's totally. like an official timeline, and it's like, oh, it kind of makes sense, but it's like they made it after the fact. Totally. The whole idea of this game is like... It do, you don't need to have played Ocarina of Time. You don't Not need to all. understand Ocarina of Time. All you have to know is there was you. There was a hero that defeated a monster, 
and then the monster came back and the hero didn't come back so the gods flooded the world okay good enough i love it and and the master sword is the same sword and the master yeah and the master sword's there like every as far as i'm concerned every zelda game is in its own universe right they're not i don't I don't think they need to be connected. I can just hear somebody. There's somebody right now Somebody's driving. Somebody's like, well, but the... It's just fucking... Or like someone is just punching their dashboard right now. Be like, that's a fucking joke. But it's... I agree with you. I fucking agree with you. Just play them as they're fun. The only one that like was designed with its place in the timeline actually like considered was Skyward Sword because it's the very first... Oh, okay, I, I never played Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword, you know what? I I have a lot of good things to say about that game. I have a lot of shitty things to say about it. Okay, Skyward Sword was the last Jedi of the series. It's like there's so many good things to say about it, but so many shitty things to say about it. Fair, okay. Um, yeah, I agree with you with the whole timeline thing. Like I just each the, one exists in its own world. The, I I care less about the like the order of the timeline and more about how I do enjoy the fact that like. And again, maybe I'm wrong, but like Ganon is the same Ganon, right? He yeah. just keeps coming back. I yeah. love that. And I love that it's the same sword. Like the master sword is the master sword mm-hmm. is the master. I've always thought that is cool. You know, I don't need to know like what order they all fucking happen in. I just like the way that they kind of referenced because Ocarina was such a monumental title for Nintendo. Mm-hmm. And for them oh, to absolutely. just be like, oh yeah, by the way, remember that? Like, yeah, this is part of that. You know, yeah. I thought that was really cool. Like that was just a way to, it's not just go to eight dungeons and then go fight Ganon. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, like in was, the, and in the middle of the game, somebody's like, have you, the King of Red Lions, I think is like, have you ever heard the story of the hero of time? Right. And yeah. they, and the whole thing. And the reason that everybody like at the beginning of the game, you're wearing like a, a shirt with a lobster on it oh yeah that's like right. a blue shirt with a lobster and then it's your 10th birthday and your grandma's like well this is your the day that everybody has to wear this stupid fucking outfit for a day and then you don't <laughs> have to wear it anymore then your sister gets kidnapped and you're like well i'm still wearing this shit i guess <laughs> i love it um i just thought of it uh one of my favorite things maybe my favorite scene in any zelda game ever ever is the recovery of the master sword in this game Remember when he gets it and he's kind of like swinging it and looking at yeah. it and just being like, yeah. And then he finds out there's no power left in it or mm-hmm. something like that. Isn't that what happened? So, yeah. And so the second half of the game, you have to go and like. Collect the Triforce chunks, right? The Triforce chunks, which th- that's a that's a whole other thing. Oh, okay. The whole like the Triforce chunks. That's I feel like that's the biggest downfall of this game. I feel like they fixed that quest quite a bit in the remake. Okay. But in the original, you have to go find, like, these eight C charts, and then you have to get them, like, translated by Tingle for 398 rupees a piece. Fucking Tingle. And it takes, like, it's an eight-hour quest that, like, they really just put in there. I don't know if it's eight hours, but it takes a long time. You have to collect a lot of rupees. You need to go find like all these charts then you gotta go get them translated and then you gotta go find like the piece that like it goes with i feel like in the hd remake like anybody who's thinking about playing this game and you have a wii u definitely do the hd remake because they shorten that considerably okay but that was a side thing you didn't have to do no no you you did okay yeah i was gonna say but you did yeah. have to do it right you did have to go get all these yeah you did have charts. to go to like okay yeah, I, to like return to high rule yeah. and stuff. So then I wonder, yeah, I wonder if they put that in there the way they did just to maybe add some. Length I think it was because like they had to cut, like there were a few dungeons that they had to cut. And you can actually see like there's a few dungeons that are really short in this game that they just made into mini dungeons, like the volcano. Like okay. you can tell that that was originally supposed to be a full dungeon. Right. They right. just cut down to like a single room. Huh. Yeah, it's interesting. Fuck, it would be so cool to sit down with them and just find out, like, mm-hmm. this was initially what we wanted to do, yeah, but we couldn't do it, so we did this. Well, you know? and there was, like, there was another island that was called Stove Pot Island, which was, like, oh, no, there was a GameCube island that was, like, in the shape of a GameCube, and then there was Stove Pipe Island, which was, like, another little village on the side of a mountain. That's so cool. I love it. I love it. I love this world. I love that there's all these little islands that are mm-hmm. separate from each other and you can travel between them and stuff. It just makes it feel so big. You know, whether it is or it isn't isn't the point. It feels big. It feel yeah, it feels like a very big game. Because like the map is like it's probably other than Breath of the Wild, it's the biggest Zelda map. Sure. And which is easy for them to do when three quarters of it is just water. It's just water, yeah. You know, so which it's not 
again, I wonder if that was their initial plan or if they realized if we use the water, we can make this into a huge world because Mm -hmm. we don't have to fill it all. It's just, you're just floating, you know? I wonder, I wonder, I want to know what it was. Uh, Another thing I put down here to talk about is, uh, it's like, again, I'm very critical of the Nintendo 64 ones. This one felt right as soon as I started playing it. I love the combat. I love the controls. I love that you can control the camera. I love that counterattack mm-hmm. system that they put in this one. I yeah. love that counterattack system. Love it. Like, I never found this one hard to play, which I really did struggle with the 64 games. Yeah, and I felt like the combat, like, it had it had that really cool thing where, like, if you waited to the right moment and then hit A, you would do a cool thing. Like, you would jump over somebody's head. Yeah. And it, it really helped. There was, like, a lot of enemies you couldn't fight head on. Right. So yeah. you would have to like use this mechanic where you would have to wait for them to attack, hit A, then like roll around behind them and stab them in the back or yeah. jump over them and stab them in the head. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't there like guys you could like you if you hit the counterattack at the right time, you'd like jump over them, hit them, and then like they would drop their armor or yeah. drop like and then they were more vulnerable to like other attacks, but you mm-hmm. had to do that counterattack first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just I'm not trying to shit all over the Nintendo 64 ones. I just felt like, the, at least for as far as the combat goals in this one, I felt like it's what they wanted to do with that, but they just quite weren't able to I, get there, you know? I think the combat in this game is it's like one of the best versions of Zelda combat. I really like what they did in Twilight Princess 2 with the, like, cool sword moves that you can unlock, but there's no Link that's, like, as fast right, and as, like, tough as, like the wind waker link it's, it's toon link yeah it's toon link it's toon link man toon link which brings me to my other, other thing i want to talk about this is my favorite zelda story like i don't think there's a story maybe majora's mask i don't think there's many other zeldas that have as good of a story i feel like this is the best version of link this is definitely the best version of ganondorf sure and this is easily the best version of zelda yeah, I can get behind that. They really like you meet Zelda. Spoilers for anyone who hasn't played it. You meet <laughs> Zelda at the very beginning of the game, and she's this pirate queen named Tetra. Yeah, and she's sassy, and she's just like, she's just about like she's not this royal princess. She's a pirate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Because she doesn't even know. No, does she, she doesn't. She doesn't know that she's like a descendant of Zelda. She doesn't know. That's right. And then she finds out later on in the game. But she has that like Triforce piece around her neck. Yeah, that's right. You're right. This does have a good storyline. Yeah. yeah. And you have like a Ganondorf that has like most. Okay. I love the Zelda games. The stories are always pretty lacking. Yeah, most they of are. the time, like if you look at like, if you look at Twilight Princess, if you look at Ocarina of Time, Ganon's mo, especially if you look at Breath of the Wild, Ganon's motivation is uh, just destroy stuff. Right. Just take over and destroy the world. Yeah, he needs the Triforce to take over the world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it doesn't really explain why. But, like, Wind Waker has a Ganondorf that has a clear motivation. Like, you talk to him at the end of the game, and he's talking about how he lived in a country in this vast desert, and the night it was freezing, and the day it was boiling, and he saw the winds of Hyrule, and how they... And how, like, there was peace, and how, like this world was so idyllic and he wanted that and he wanted it for himself. Right. And he wanted it for his people. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So his, like him taking the Triforce was him trying to, he was on a quest for power, but it was also for his people. Right. Yeah. He doesn't get a lot of credit. Like, I mean, Breath of the Wild for as great as it is, I felt like that was amongst the shittiest Ganons. Yeah. That was easily the, like, Like, I love, he was boring. Like, that's my favorite game of all time, but that was not a good, Ganon, yeah, no, there yeah. Was no. Whereas this one, yeah, Ganon, like has like he's got there's some methods to his mm-hmm. madness in this one, and I also put it all like I actually really like Link in this one. Yeah, like he's it's very expressive. He's got yeah, you know, like I mean, like Link never talks, and he fucking he does a little in this one, right? Well, but I mean, like he doesn't, you know, he's not going to be out yeah. having conversations. You know what I mean? Like that's all I'm trying to say is like he's he's that protagonist that you just kind of. But he has a character. Yeah, unlike. Like, any others, most other Zelda games, it's like, oh, your Link, so sure. whatever your feeling is. But this Link, you can see he's got motivation, he's got facial expression. Yeah, it's like, oh, there he's at, like he's going to save his sister. That was the thing, like, and I think that's genius that the game starts with you trying to go save his sister because mm-hmm. to me, it's like I can just, it's almost like a movie, and it's like, all right, well, I'm, I'm behind this guy now. 
Yeah. It's like, yeah, let's fucking go get your sister back. You know what I mean? Like, I just, and then, like, and then Tetra is such a cool, like, badass. It's like, help. You know what I mean? And, like, yeah. I just, I like, I, I really find myself invested in them in this game. It wasn't just like, oh, I'm the guy in green who's got to go stop the pig. I've got, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 I guess I got to go do that thing. Right. That thing. I, like, at least to start the game, you don't even realize it has anything to do with the Triforce or Ganon, or you just got to go save your princess or save your sister. Yeah. And, your sister was kidnapped. Right. And your grandmother is sad. And then by the time you get into the the Zelda lore with the Master Sword and Ganon and the Triforce and Zelda and everything like that, you're already invested in this guy. Yeah. You know, where you're like, I'm on this guy's side. This is cool, you know? And that's another thing I like about the cartoon and the art style of this is it was really easy for them to give everybody character. Like you said, Link's got some really good facial expressions. Like, Mm -hmm. he's awesome. Do you remember, and I I just remembered this, do you remember there's a part where you get to like, I think it's probably like the first village or something, Uh, but there's like these little kids that are like these little tough guys, you know what I mean? And like, and like, and it's so easy to give them that because of the art style it's those i don't know if it would work to play hide and seek with and they're talking like they're from west side story or right something. yeah i think when you switch to that cartoony art style it's much easier to give them the little ticks and the nuances and the facial expressions and stuff they need as opposed to trying to make them more photorealistic mm-hmm. if you were to go uh with the uh, with the ocarina uh, of time model you know what i mean mm-hmm. like it's a great game, man. I it's love a it. Fantastic game. I just and the controls are perfect on it. And I just, I just, I guess some, I mean, some people complain about the 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 travel in the boat, but I, I'm telling you. And granted, I haven't played this game in since I played it on GameCube. I haven't played it since. Well, um, and, it's, and this is another one we're talking for talking the HD remake. There's a thing you can get pretty early in the game called the Swift Sail, and how it works is you travel at twice the speed. And the wind is automatically facing any way you, where you're going. Oh, okay. Like, as cool as the Wind Waker was and as cool as the wind mechanic is, yeah. it was very tedious to be like, where do I have to go? I have to go over here. All right, I've got to do the do, do, do. Oh, yeah, thing. you had to play the little wand. You had, to play the, yeah. you had to play the Wind Waker to change the direction of the wind and the direction you were going. Yeah, yeah. The swift sail, it's like face where you're going, press A, and you're headed there. Beauty. Well, that's just, I mean, that's hindsight's 2020 type mm-hmm. thing, right? Well, and it's one of those things that they couldn't do on the GameCube. Right. They had to, like, there was a, the, your character could only travel as fast as the world would load. Right. Whereas in, like, the HD remake, right. the world could load considerably quicker, so sure. your character could go twice as fast. Sure. It's interesting, eh? It's fascinating to see what you would not necessarily even remake. Like, yeah, I guess remakes, but like not from the ground up. But just when you take an older game and polish it up, and like it's like pumping it full of steroids and just putting like, it on a new system and just seeing what it could do that it couldn't do before. Just like adding a few things, and that's what I'm really, really hoping. It, hoping, and not to go off too much on a tangent, but they're doing a Link's Awakening remake for yeah, the Switch this year. Fuck yeah, they are. And I really want to see. What Because the thing that annoyed me most about that game, and I know we talked about it in our Link's Awakening episode. Which you should go which, back and look in the archives. Which you can go back and listen to. But one of the things is like, there was like two spaces for items. Yeah. And there was so odd. So you'd have to be trading out. like Constantly. Yeah. yeah and I'm yeah. hoping that that's what they fix. I'm sure know? they will. Yeah. I'm, there's no reason not to. If you re- Frankly, if they re-released that game and didn't change that, they would catch a lot of shit. Yeah. You know, but even if like, even if it's nothing more than like you have four buttons to set up items to now, even if that's all it is, like even that, that would, would be, be a, so much better. That'd be a considerable step up. Oh, so much better. So this is a good game. I like... Uh, I think we do this every time you and I talk Zelda, but we haven't talked Zelda in quite a while. Mm-hmm. Like personally, in, in, not necessarily in this order, but my five favorite Zelda games are number one is Link to the Past. I still adore that game. I won't argue with you on that one. That's a uh, great game. Breath of the Wild. Yeah, Link between. I loved Link Between Worlds. I won't even. I won't even argue with your placement on that one. That's a fantastic and so often overlooked game. So good. And the then, only problem with it is it's so short. Yeah, but oh God, I loved it. I love the way you have all the items. And stuff. I love that game. And then I, then I would go with Wind Waker and Link's Awakening. Have we done a favorite. Link Between Worlds episode? No, because it's still on a current console, technically. I Okay, yeah, I guess. Kind of. Nintendo's going to retire the 3DS soon. Mm-hmm. The Switch has taken the 3DS's spot. Well, it has. Like, it... I don't see, like, every time they announce a new game for the 3DS, it's kind of like, but why? Yeah, maybe just because so many of them are out there, mm-hmm. you know, but, like, so that would be the, and not, not necessarily in that order. That'd be my five. Like, what are your five favorite, if you had to go five favorite Zelda games? That's tough. It might, Breath of the Wild, Majora's Mask, Wind Waker. No, no, Link, Link to the Past, Wind Waker, 
then maybe the last one is crossbow training yeah oh yeah <laughs> we forgot <crossbow laughs> training. and then maybe the last one would be either link between worlds or they're so good yeah i don't know that's tough like trying to make a top five is hard for me it's a fun because it's like it's each one is so different i feel more so like like i mean zelda like the zelda franchise is unquestionably one of the most like legendary video game series of all time well unquestionably they do, they do some every time they put out a game they do something so weirdly different uh, yeah and that's the thing about it is like like for my money and again i'm biased i Maybe get twilight that. princess is that fifth spot all right uh i get that i'm incredibly biased but for my money the two not even biggest as far as they are two of the biggest as far as sales but as far as like they're they're like if you made a mount rushmore of video game franchises the two absolute locks are the Mario games and the Zelda games. Yeah. The two absolute locks, and they're both owned by Nintendo. But it's funny because with Mario, they don't really experiment that much. They'll throw in little things like the like the gravity part of Galaxy or like some weird power ups and stuff. But they don't get super crazy with it, you know. Mm-hmm. Whereas with Zelda. It feels like almost every time they release a game, I know that a lot of them follow, and this one did as well, a lot of them follow that basic formula of you have to get three of something and then you got a good seven or eight of something. You know what I mean? Like, I get but that they do Instead of like that trying to get three of something and like Hyrule, you're now on a boat. Right. Uh, and I get that they stick to that script a lot of the time, but Zelda changes it up so much, be it their art style or or the, the boat mechanic or the open world Breath of the Wild mechanic or in Link Between Worlds, how you got all the items like right away mm-hmm. mechanic. They're always adding, like they're always changing it up. And every time they change it up, people shit on it to start. And then by the end of it, people are like, God damn, that was it's Zelda. It's like, yeah, that was like, it's so good. They have good. a good point there. And that really fascinates me that they have these two huge franchises and they go so safe with one and so crazy with the other one. The one time they got crazy with Mario was probably Mario Sunshine and people shat all over it. And now people are like, actually, Sunshine's pretty good. You know what I Although mean? Although the like, one time they got too weird with the Zelda it was Skyward Sword. And I don't think. Right. Right. That's but, a game that, like, didn't age terribly well. No. But, um, like, the frustrating thing is there's so many good things about that game. It has some of the best, like, dungeons in the series. But it's the, those motion controls killed it. Uh, motion controls are the worst. And Fee, Fi, whatever the character's name, however it's pronounced, just so annoying. I hate, I hate motion controls. Yeah. But Zelda just, I just, I, the, like the, the whole series, like, forget, I don't care about the fucking timeline either, like you said. The, the franchise of Zelda fascinates me because every single time they release a game, they try something different or they mm-hmm. change it up somehow. And to the point where sometimes it feels like you're playing an entirely different game. Mm-hmm. And uh, yet they're always still. Like Breath of the Wild was like, you right. could jump and people are like, what? This isn't a Zelda right. game anymore. Uh, and, but every time they do it, people are just like, dude, that was fucking great too. Mm-hmm. Like, that was great too, you know? I'm spent. You got anything right. else to say about Wind Waker? It's a fantastic game, and if you haven't played it, you should play it. You should play it. It's available on HD Remake on the Wii U, and because it was a game on the Wii U that was good, it'll inevitably probably find its way over to Switch because nobody played it on the Wii U. Oh, that would be nice. I think, like, what's, like, oh, yeah, okay, so we'll score this thing and end it, but, like, people are, like, they've ported so many Wii U games over to the Switch, and it's, like, what's left from the Wii U that has imported the Switch? And I'm, like, there's, there's Pikmin 3, which I don't care about. There's 3D World, which I care about very, very much. Mario which 3D Which they World. should, but they should port that. They will. I would bet money they will. And uh, and then there's the Wind Waker remake, which I'm just floored isn't already on the Switch, but it's coming. And tell me that wouldn't be perfect for Switch. Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. Yeah, just give us all of them. Yeah. I just, it's, we're not going, I'm not going to, I fucking, I don't know when this episode will come out in relation to other episodes, but I have got two other ones in the bank where I rant about Nintendo and their fucking old games that they don't re-release <laughs> and I'm not going to do it again. It just pisses me off. <laughs> Mark, now we're scoring the original Wind Waker, not the HD remake with the with okay. the modifications. What would you give the original GameCube Wind Waker on a scale of 1 to 10 today? 9.5 with 0.5 taken off for that last quest. All right. Uh, I'll go with a nine because I love it. I haven't played it in a long time, but I, I, it's, you know what? It's, dude, as much as any game I've played, it's one that I played once. I played a long time ago, and to this day, I'm like, as soon as I think of it, I'm just like, ah, fuck, that was a good game. Mm-hmm. You know, 
And I don't care what anybody says, it has the single best art style of any Zelda game ever. And I'll fucking die on that hill. I will not fight you that hard on that. Yeah, you nerds. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Thanks, buddy. Cool. Thanks for having me. That's going to do it for this week's episode, you guys. Mark McHugh, my friend, thank you so much for coming on and talking Zelda with me. And to each and every one of you, thank you so much for listening to this stupid podcast. It means a lot to me. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe to us on whatever your podcast service of choice is. If you're on the YouTube, hit us up at our new channel, youtube.com slash remember the game. Uh, there's not anything on there right now, but old episodes of this podcast, which you're welcome to watch as much as you want. But there is more, more stuff coming in the coming weeks, I promise. Uh, we're on Facebook at facebook.com slash remember the game. And we're on Twitter and Instagram at member the game because some bastard already has the remember part. Uh, that's it. If you like the show, please leave us a good review. That would be rad. And uh, go play some video games. And uh, good enough. The, the outro always sucks. I will check in with you guys again in seven days for episode 47 of Remember the Game. Take it easy, you guys. I'll see you in a week. Cheers. <laughs>